Before I dive into this conversation, if you guys really love the content, I'd appreciate if you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We are on our road to 150,000 subscribers. Today we're gonna go over a report that Nintendo is actually making less games than pretty much they've ever made in the past. And I'm actually gonna go over how this is probably a good thing, which bucks industry trends where a lot of these companies are really struggling to get games out. I mean, heck, Sony's recent financial report came out and seems to be indicating they're not going to have any massive releases like big exclusives until the next fiscal year, which that always seems to feel like the case with PlayStation 5 this generation. It's the always next year mantra of the exclusives as everyone seems to be struggling to get games out, but Nintendo struggles may not seem as extreme. And look, we've had a game averaged almost one per month published this entire uh, year. So clearly Nintendo's not having quite the same issues, but I think what's happening here is a fundamentally good thing. And we have some fact-based evidence to go over. And before we do, I want to talk about this idea of what's good and what's bad. It's a highly subjective thing. And so while I'm gonna be going over why I think this is good, some of you guys might feel like you're on the other side and that is totally okay. I appreciate the discourse. In fact, before we even get into it, why not head down to the comments below and let me know what you think about this already, including what I'm about to mention here about something that we don't even know if it's happening. It's just a rumor at this point, but supposedly a remaster slash remake of Breath of the Wild is coming to Nintendo Switch 2. And there's been a lot of discourse over whether this is a good or bad thing. And I kind of find this to be a little interesting because I find it to be a good thing. I'm really excited. Breath of the Wild is one of my favorite games. We haven't had this thing touched since the release of Switch, but it's weird because the discourse seems to be, well, I don't want that to be the launch game for Nintendo Switch 2, which I... I I find interesting. Look, uh, we had Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in the first year of Nintendo Switch, and that was not a launch game. They're not launching Switch 2 at, with this, guys. This isn't like in lieu of anything. Haven't we learned anything about Nintendo during the Switch generation? They're going to remaster slash port a lot of old games, but that's not in lieu of creating new ones. So I just wanted to throw that out there uh, before we dive into this, because again, this is about subjective opinions. Hey, what you think about that Breath of the Wild story? Let me know down below because everyone basically only commented about the playable Zelda game and they completely skipped the second story, which was the entire headline of the damn video. So yeah, let me know what you think about that Breath of the Wild possibly getting remastered, remade. Comes from Midori down in the comments below. Let's dive into all this post over by Stefan Dottillo. He actually did an entire article on this, but he does keep it behind a paywall. And I don't really feel like showing that whole article because it's not just about Nintendo. But I want to talk about this stuff because he put it out on X today. In 2013, Nintendo consolidated its handheld and console game dev teams. By 2020, Nintendo was releasing games on one hybrid platform. Despite that, Nintendo's gaming output has decreased based on data it's tallied for over a decade and said last week it will no longer report. So this is the final report Nintendo's giving. We'll be able to obviously track what games they're outputting because there are literally games that were released, so it just has to be tracked by fans. But you can kind of see back during, you know, you got the DS Wii, 3DS Wii U, and Switch era. I mean, look at this. You're upwards over 25, 25 here. Uh, you're, you know, up at 18 or so, 2010, back up above 20 here, probably creeping closer to 30. And you can kind of see how things went all the way until, well, here's the Switch era. Now, the Switch era obviously still had a number of 3DS published titles by Nintendo. And then 2018 had even less with more Switch, obviously more Switch and 3DS. And then they were done with 3DS as of 2020, where it was only Switch published titles. And you can see that they actually still have been averaging quite a bit. They're averaging, look at this, more than one per month. So they've been very consistent on averaging that, and they're literally on that exact same pace this year. So they're publishing a lot of titles, but if you look at this compared to the old charts when they had two systems, they're publishing significantly less. Now, Nintendo did comment on this during their investors meeting, saying that they knew that things were going to get more complex and games weren't going to come out as often. But I actually think that this is ultimately a good thing for Nintendo, whereas for others, maybe it's not. And I'm very curious what you think on this. Let's get into the rest of the tweets here. He says, game companies across the industry has said big games take more time and resources to create, 
Production of state-of-the-art graphics, even on Switch-level hardware, is considerable. Nintendo 2 has talked about the game dev being more complex, and yes, they did. Some Switch games are more vast than prior-gen franchise releases, a sign of greater resources on the game. You can see things like Tears of the Kingdom, even Breath of the Wild, technically. Pikmin 4. Nintendo, without a dedicated handheld, also seems less inclined to produce smaller and simpler franchises. <sighs> Rip, top-down Zelda. That one always stings a little bit. Uh, they still have some small stuff, but just not quite as many. Is this all a development story or also a sign that Nintendo sees a cap on what customers will buy? The company strove for nearly monthly releases for its handhelds and consoles. Now it largely does the same for its lone supported device, the Switch. One sign that Nintendo's reduced output is a success is the jaw-dropping number for its top titles. Nine Nintendo published Switch games have sold more than 20 million units. The Wii had seven, the DS only had three. So between the DS and Wii, Nintendo Switch has almost the same number of combined 20 plus million sellers. And you can see the list here. Obviously, we know this list very well as Nintendo fans. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at the top, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Tears, I'm uh, sorry, not Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, Pokemon Sword and Shield, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, uh, Super Mario Party, and obviously Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Who knows? Maybe U Deluxe or something like that might eventually crawl up to be game number 10. We'll see what's going on. So he talks about, if you find this interesting, you can go check out his bigger article on this topic. Now, the one thing I want to bring up when talking about this and why I feel like this is an overall good thing is when we saw the sales, right? Well, I think what Nintendo has learned is that you don't need to release as many games if you can make each game that you release a bigger deal that sells more. The biggest thing Nintendo has going for them is because they were supporting two platforms for so long that them reducing the number of titles they put out so they could put out higher quality, bigger bolder experiences has actually led to a boom for them because the pace at which their games are coming out on Switch doesn't actually feel slower than other platforms. In fact, Nintendo struggled to get a published game out every month on things like the Wii U and even the Nintendo Wii. They really struggled doing that. A lot of that game output was really over on the 3DS and a lot of it was a lot smaller titles. Now, when you're looking at Nintendo, you can guarantee almost yearly, and maybe this year's the exception, we don't know yet, that Nintendo's gonna have one to two, sometimes three, really massive titles that come out. And then they're also gonna have a lot of high quality stuff in between, not just DLC, but literal high quality releases. I mean, you can even go back to last year, right? What were the couple of big titles last year? We had Tears of the Kingdom and you had Super Mario Wonder, both of them being really, really big sellers. Well, they wasn't the only stuff they released last year. Pikmin 4, hello, that ended up being a pretty big deal, even if not as big as those other ones. How about even some, something like Bayonetta Origins that they teamed up with Platinum Games on? A smaller title, but a quality title. Nintendo has found a way to keep consistent releases going nearly monthly on Switch, and it feels really, really enthralling. Even this year, as much as we criticize not having those big titles at least announced yet, Nintendo's still been putting out games which is a lot more than what other platforms can say xbox and playstation are both struggling to get exclusive content out yearly let alone monthly and here's nintendo in the eighth year of the platform still churning out games every single month yeah some of it might be ports and remasters but guess what sony and xbox do the exact same things and they still can't get this stuff out every single month. Now, Nintendo has some benefits to the way they do things. One, they have built up a strong following for smaller titles. So things like side-scrolling Kirby games can sell a couple million, and Nintendo will be very happy with that. There's not a lot of franchises like that for the other platforms. It also shows that platform holders may be a little bit too focused on the big AAA and service-style games and less focused on trying to provide a much more uh, wide breadth of content. I mean, where's the last time that you saw like Sony put out a game like Endless Ocean Luminous, right? Like Nintendo focuses on sort of a wide variety of content that has a different levels of appeal to different audiences. And Sony and Xbox seem to focus more on specific AAA, you know, sort of experiences. Nintendo has those experiences, by the way. That's what I talk about with their 
big games, right? Those big games of a year would, would be what you would call Nintendo's AAA games. Like you might not think Mario Wonder's a AAA game, but it sure sells like one, and it sure has the care and polish of one. So it's arguable that for Nintendo, that is a AAA-style game. And again, they had two of them last year, and you could argue three if you want to toss Pikmin 4 in. Pikmin 4 definitely had the love and care, just doesn't have the sales appeal of some of the other franchises. And even then, it's still the best-selling Pikmin game ever. So... Nintendo has found a massive sales success by putting out less titles technically, but never feeling that way as a platform holder because we're actually getting more exclusive content than any other platform that's obviously not PC that's getting thousands of exclusive indie games released every single day. So I just got to say that I think Nintendo's strategy is good. While it would be nice if they could keep up the weird pace of chucking out 25 plus games a year, that is a lot of games to put out, and as much as I miss things like Top Down Zelda and others, and who knows, maybe Top Down Zelda comes back. We technically had one with Link's Awakening. I know it was a remake or remaster, but we are getting less Zelda games released, but look at the sales of the last two Zelda games. They've almost outsold the entire Zelda series combined. So I just want to throw out there that I think Nintendo has actually made a good choice here with what they're doing. And this ends up being a positive. This is why Nintendo feels like they're less affected than everybody else, because they were better prepared for this transition to needing to spend more money and bigger teams and all of that. Because one, Nintendo's budgets weren't insane in the first place. So we talk about, oh man, they're going to have to spend even more to make games. Okay, yeah, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom probably cost about 100, 120 ish million for Nintendo to develop. Okay, and that includes the marketing budget, by the way. Well, all right, so let's say what the next Zelda is 150 million. Yeah, compare that to budgets for things like Spider Man 2 that can't even sell what Tears of the Kingdom sold. The point I am making, and but the, the licensing thing, there's a whole bunch of reasons that Spider Man 2 wasn't really that profitable for Sony, but the point is that Nintendo has these things under control, and even as we talk about a 150 million dollar budget for say the next 3D Zelda game, the next Mario game might have only had like a $50 million budget. It might go on to sell 10, 20, 30 million copies, who knows? And they'll be profitable literally pretty much at launch. So I think that there's just a lot of focus and, and, and weirdness going on with a lot of these companies and Nintendo just doesn't have to deal with it. Correct me if I'm wrong and, and feel free to drop opinions down below. Sony talked about things like, you know, focusing on service games and all this other stuff. Meanwhile, Nintendo just keeps talking about making great games. Uh, and I like Nintendo's approach. They're not fundamentally changing what their company does. They may be outputting less games because it's harder to make games quicker for HD and up systems, but they're still keeping up that consistent cadence that there's always something coming. Even if it's a port or a remaster, it doesn't matter. There's always something releasing for a brand new buyer today all the time. Again, very weak year this year in terms of major releases, but always something coming. We literally, you buy a Switch today, thousand year door releases this month. Luigi's mentioned two HD releases next month. NES Remix World Championship. I know it's not actually NES Remix. It's just Nintendo World Championships 1990 game comes out July 18th. There's always something coming every single month. And that's just the way Nintendo rolls, man. That's just, they just keep it going. So that's why it just feels like Nintendo's in such a better position than everyone else, even though they're technically putting out less games. Also of note, Nintendo's making more money this generation than they've ever made in the entire history of the company. So the strategy is working from a financial place as well. And all of us Nintendo fans, look, if we're honest about the entire Switch generation, I think almost all of us are very satisfied with the game output this generation and what we've gotten to play and the amazing wide breadth of experiences we've gotten to enjoy. I honestly don't think any of you guys are really that mad at the Switch generation, but let me know if I'm wrong about that again down below. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojets from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.